Hello, hello, hello! Today we're going to take a quick look at the latest entry in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, directed by Destin Daniel Cretton. Simu Liu stars as Sean, aka Shang-Chi. He went from Shang to Sean. He wasn't very creative. He and his best friend Katie, played by Aquafina, are living in San Francisco and working menial jobs and not really going anywhere with their lives, but they seem perfectly okay with that. They're alive, they're happy, what more do you need? I'm not sure how you can have a job doing valet parking and still afford an apartment in San Francisco, but oh well. Everything is going well until one day some thugs attack Sean on a bus and suddenly a huge martial arts fight breaks out. Honestly, it's probably not the strangest thing that's happened on the Muni. Sean then reveals to Katie that he has a mysterious past, along with a long-lost father and sister, and a long-dead mother because this is a superhero origin story, so at least one parent gotta go. Anyway, it seems Shang-Chi's past has caught up to him at last, so he must go on a journey to sort this out. Somehow this leads to a lost mystical city and a sinister plot to unleash this evil being that will destroy the world, and an unexpected returning character. And no, I don't mean Abomination. So this was a Marvel character that I knew almost nothing about, really didn't know what to expect going in, and what I got was pretty awesome. Essentially, this is a martial arts movie disguised as a superhero movie. Until the big CGI explosion fest at the end, because Marvel. Good to see some more Asian representation in the MCU, both in front of and behind the camera. I'm glad someone finally figured that out. Saw a few familiar faces in here, like Aquafina and Michelle Yeoh, and also some unfamiliar faces that I hope to see more of in the future. Lou, who the internet discovered previously had a career appearing in stock photos, is really good in this. He does a great job playing this reluctant hero who is trying to hide from his past until he eventually realizes that's not an option. His sister, Xia Ling, played by Menger Zhang, is in a similar situation, although she has a bit more ambition. While her brother would rather stay in the shadows and just live a very quiet life, she would much rather go to Macau and make shitloads of money. I can't blame her. And her upbringing may have something to do with her ambition, because her brother was being trained by her father to be an assassin, but daddy couldn't be bothered to train her, so she basically had to teach herself. And she did. She is very driven and very self-sufficient, and Zhang plays this part as someone who gave her last remaining fuck very early in life. As for Aquafina, she has always been kind of hit and miss with me, and I was a bit worried that she would end up playing the annoying sidekick who doesn't really do anything. But that is not the case. Instead, she is the annoying sidekick who does stuff. For the big climactic fight at the end, she actually bothers to learn archery so she can help with the fight and even gets pretty good at it. And this ties into her arc. She starts out directionless and then eventually figures out, oh, this is what I'm supposed to do. She kind of reminds me of what Darcy Lewis eventually became, except it didn't take multiple movies and a TV series to get there. And now I am just waiting for the moment where she eventually meets Hawkeye and tries to bond with him because they're both archers and he just wants nothing to do with her. You know what's gonna happen. And I would be remiss if I did not mention Tony Lung, who plays Shu Wen Wu, the villain of the story and Shang's father. He gave a great performance and I really dug this character. He's intelligent, ruthless, a very good fighter, and very much the hero of his own story. And he clearly wants to be the hero, but his sense of what is right and wrong has clearly been clouded by his grief after the death of his wife. And I thought Lung absolutely nailed that aspect of the character. As for the returning character I alluded to before, I'm not sure I want to say who it is just in case anyone watching this has not seen the movie or read any spoilers that revealed who it is, but... It was someone that I never expected to see in the MCU again, but I thought what they did with him was just brilliant. And if you were disappointed by his previous appearance, this should make up for it. The action sequences are absolutely amazing. The fight on the bus at the beginning of this movie, I thought the bus fight in Nobody was good, but this just blows it out of the water. There's also a really fun fight sequence that takes place on a scaffold on the edge of a building, and you can tell Lu and Zhang really put in the work. I mean, they both trained in several martial arts to prepare for this movie, and it shows. 
Near the end of the movie, it does go all CGI splody because Marvel, and honestly, I think I could have done without that. I was perfectly happy with all the martial arts stuff, but at least they actually tried to make it fit with the story, unlike Black Widow, where it seemed like they went all splody just because it's a Marvel movie and they feel obligated to do so. Overall, I dug this. This was a lot of fun. I really like these characters. I hope to see more of them in the future, and... If you can see this in a theater safely, I do recommend doing so. If not, I'm sure it'll hit VOD eventually, and you should catch it when it does. And make sure you stay all the way through the end of the credits. There were so many people in my theater, almost all of them, in fact, who got up after the mid credit scene, and I'm just sitting there looking at them and like, okay, I'm sure some of you haven't been in a theater for a year and a half, but have you seriously forgotten how this works? And that's all I got to say about Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Till next time, take care.